Most mm -hmm. people think mouthwash is just for fresh breath and healthy teeth. But what if I told you that you could actually be doing more harm than good? So some mouthwashes actually strip away the minerals that protect your teeth and others dry out your mouth, making bad breath worse. And the strongest ones can actually be killing the good bacteria which your mouth actually needs. Now I see people making these mistakes, thinking they're doing the right thing, patients, friends, and even some people who are super health conscious. But the truth is mouthwash the wrong way could actually be setting you back instead of helping you. So in this video, I'm going to try and cover the three most common mouthwash mistakes, who actually needs it, who should avoid it, how to use it the right way. And because you don't want to just be making these common mistakes and wasting your money, but you could actually be damaging your teeth and doing more harm than good. So most people get this wrong. So if you ask most people, they'll tell you mouthwash is essential, just like brushing and flossing. But let me ask you this. If you're brushing and flossing correctly, as you should be every day, you know, brushing twice a day, flossing every night, do you actually need mouthwash? And the answer is probably not, because this is exactly where people go wrong. Millions of people use mouthwash incorrectly, thinking it does things that it doesn't do. So first, let's try and get a few things straight and let's clear up some of the most common myths about mouthwash. So I've seen a lot of people believe that mouthwash can actually replace brushing and flossing. Now, the thing is, mouthwash cannot remove plaque. And the only thing that can remove plaque is brushing and flossing. So if you're relying on mouthwash to remove the plaque, you're leaving the bacteria and the plaque on your teeth behind. And the other myth I see people fall for is thinking that if they have a strong mouthwash, it can actually be better. And the thing is, alcohol-based mouthwash or many of these sort of strong mouthwashes, what they do is they kill all the bacteria in your mouth, including the good ones. And we need some good bacteria as well, because what happens is if you kill all the bacteria, you're actually disrupting the oral microbiome. And this can actually lead to more bad bacteria to grow on later, which is not something we want. And the third problem or the third myth I see people think is that they use mouthwash because they think it can prevent cavities on its own. And the thing is, it's only fluoride mouthwash that can actually sometimes help prevent cavities or help prevent early cavities. Um, and even then, that has to be used properly. That's not replacing the brushing and the flossing. So many mouthwashes, in fact, don't contain fluoride at all. The other mistake I see a lot of people do, and that shouldn't be happening, is they rinse immediately after brushing. So a lot of people would use a mouthwash after brushing, especially if you're using a fluoride toothpaste. What happens is you end up washing all the good stuff from the fluoride. You end up washing all the protective benefits of fluoride. And fluoride essentially needs time. It needs about 30 minutes to work on your teeth. And if you're using mouthwash right after brushing, you're pretty much washing away all the fluoride or all the good effects from the toothpaste. And actually, some people should never be using mouthwash daily. And I'll explain why in just a minute. Now, mouthwash can actually be useful, but only when you understand why you need it and what it does and what it doesn't do. So the first thing or the most common thing people would use mouthwash for is because they think it's going to freshen their breath. And yes, it can help temporarily. So if you have chronic bad breath, if you have you know, underlying conditions like dry mouth, gum disease, digestive problems, mouthwash alone doesn't fix it. It can sometimes mask the issue, but it's not gonna help clear the chronic or the main reason of the bad breath. And another benefit, uh, but that's only usually when we prescribe it as dentists, um, is it can help reduce gum inflammation. Um, and that's only used for a temporary period of time. So it's a prescription mouthwash, uh, something like chlorhexidine, uh, and that can sometimes help with gum disease. But if you're using them for a long period of time, it can actually have negative effects. So it can, for example, stain your teeth and it can even disrupt your oral microbiome. And sometimes think of mouthwash as like spraying an air freshener in a dirty room. Does the room smell better? Probably. But the mess is still there. So who actually needs mouthwash? So mouthwash isn't bad. It just necessarily isn't for everyone. But there are a few cases where they can actually help. So if you have gum disease, and these are prescriptions which we prescribe as dentists, um, so they don't replace the fact of brushing and flossing, but sometimes they can help with the bacteria and the gum inflammation. The other thing is if you're prone to cavities, sometimes a fluoride mouthwash can help strengthen the enamel, especially um, if you're at risk of developing uh, cavities or if you're at a higher risk of developing cavities, especially if there's early enamel caries or technically early decay on the tooth that can sometimes be reversed with fluoride or sort of an increase of fluoride. And the other reason is if you have dry mouth, so less saliva means a higher risk of cavities. 
but the wrong mouthwash can actually make it worse especially if you're using an alcohol-based mouthwash because what the alcohol does to your mouth is it ends up drying your mouth even more increasing your risk of cavities so what kind of mouthwash should we actually use so let's try and break it down so we've got alcohol-based mouthwash and alcohol-free mouthwash so one of the biggest mistakes we have um, in oral health uh, and as dentists is some people recommend alcohol-based mouthwash and a lot of people would recommend alcohol-free based mouthwash um, and the truth i think is it depends on your needs so alcohol-based mouthwash it can kill bacteria effectively can make your mouth feel clean um, it provides a strong you know clean feeling uh, it can help with gingivitis or basically gum disease but the downsides is it can cause a dry mouth because it lowers the saliva production in your mouth and that can increase your risk of cavities and can actually even make bad breath worse and it can sometimes be too harsh on sensitive gums and i personally wouldn't recommend it for long-term daily use and then we've got the alcohol free options so they can be gentle on your oral tissues they don't dry out your mouth so they don't reduce the saliva production in your mouth so they don't l increase your risk of cavities but they might not kill as much bacteria or as aggressively as the alcohol-based mouthwash. Um, and some of them actually lack fluoride, uh, which, as I mentioned, helps prevent cavities. But here's where it gets interesting. Some people shouldn't use mouthwash at all. And if you fall into any of these categories, I suggest you reconsider using it or at least change the way you use it. So people with dry mouth or the technical word for that is xerostomia. So if you already have dry mouth, an alcohol-based mouthwash, as I mentioned, can actually make it worse. And the dry mouth means less saliva. And the saliva is essential for washing away the food and the bacteria build up. Without it, uh, you risk cavities. And instead, in these cases, what I suggest using is a moisturizing mouthwash, specifically designed for dry mouth. And the other group of people that I suggest don't use a mouthwash are people with sensitive teeth and gums. So mouthwash contains harsh ingredients. And that sometimes can cause sensitivity, especially if you have receding gums um, or enamel erosion. And in such cases, I suggest you use a fluoride-based mouthwash in case you need one. Now, the other group of people who I suggest stay away from mouthwash are people who use a chlorexidine or a chlorexidine-based mouthwash. And that's because chlorexidine is a prescription-based mouthwash, which is great for treating gum disease. But if you use it for a long period of time, it can actually stain your teeth or it can even sometimes alter your, uh, your taste perception. So if you've been using it for periods, uh, multiple months, uh, then I suggest speaking to your dentist about that. So if you do use mouthwash, how do you use it correctly? So let's go over the best practices to do so. So if you want to get the most out of your mouthwash, I suggest you follow these simple steps. So the first thing is brushing and flossing are non-negotiable. Mouthwash is not going to replace that. So make sure you get that first. Um, the second thing is why are you using the mouthwash? So make sure you use the right type of mouthwash uh, and know the reason why you're using it. So if you're at a risk of developing cavities, then I suggest using a fluoride based mouthwash for gum health, then an antibacterial based mouthwash. Um, and depending on your dentist, maybe a chlorexidine based mouthwash for a short period of time, or maybe if it's for dry mouth, uh, then you should possibly be looking at an alcohol free based mouthwash so choosing the right type can actually make all the difference and the third step is you should switch for 30 to 60 seconds so time matters here if you don't switch for long enough you're not actually using it properly and you're not going to get the benefits of it and the fourth thing you should be doing is you shouldn't be rinsing with water afterwards because um, if you use the mouthwash and then you rinse uh, with water then you're basically washing away uh, all the good effects of the uh, of the mouthwash and the fifth step is you should be waiting at least 30 minutes before eating or drinking and that's very important especially if you're using a fluoride based mouthwash because the fluoride needs at least 30 minutes so it can sort of get absorbed um, into the enamel um, and if you eat or drink too soon you're basically washing that away so mouthwash is useful in certain situations but it's not a magic fix so if you're brushing, flossing correctly, if you have the right diet, if you're at low risk of developing cavities or if you're at low risk of gum disease, then I would say there's not really a point of using mouthwash. But if you actually still want to use it, make sure you do it the right way.